Hey everyone, this is Fernando doing another video for More Survivalist, in this case doing a book review of Wartime Farm. It's both a book review and a video recommendation as well because Wartime Farm, uh, this is by BBC, is um, not only a book but it's a TV series that you will find in YouTube. If you look in YouTube, Wartime Farm, you will find many of the full episodes of this series. And unlike the junk we see uh, regarding it, you know, reality TV prepping, survival junk, that it's simply awful and there's no value in that, this is very different. This is quality stuff. These are, you know, basically a story goes about three guys that are recreating the wartime farms and going back through um, what it is that these uh, farms were doing during the war effort, right? In Britain, many of the um, uh, people that were living in the cities were evacuating to the, the countryside. The countryside was doing its part in the war effort by producing food that was no longer uh, entering the country because of, of the ongoing war. So it's, it's about uh, life in a farm during war and of course during this actual war during uh, World War II. So it's very informative, it is great because there's no melodrama of reality TV junk that is so frequent these days. It's purely about reenacting, recreating and going through these skills used during uh, World War II. So here it goes about uh, Meet the Farmers, these are the guys that are involved in the series. Of course, they get lots of help from uh, from other people, from farmers, from old timers that actually remember what it was like being in a farm during World War II in Britain. Manor Farm is the name of the farm they are using for recreating and, and going through all this adventure. It takes, I believe it was, a year. This is the actual farm. And well, the book is actually pretty nice. It has all the information of how uh, things went by, chronologically speaking, grow your own. The battle for food. So yes, as I was saying before, it was this problem of, of not having Britain was importing most of its food because of the war they were forced to start producing food themselves, dig for victory. This is actually very related to survival and preparedness in, in the real aspect, not uh, you know, not uh, fantasies or you know some of the nut stuff we see these days. Unfortunately, so much of this is actually uh, learning from history, which I always recommend. I always repeat that, and I'll never get tired of it. You cannot get better uh, knowledge than actual uh, hands-on uh, real stuff. What actually happened and what actually worked at some point in history. Of course, there are differences. Of course, but this always will beat any delusions or any junk a TV producer comes up with. Especially, especially a TV producer that's more thinking about doing stupid stuff that uh, low IQ audience will go for, rather than this. This, I, I mean, I watched, uh, I must, must have th uh, seen three episodes, three full episodes in YouTube, and they are all great stuff. There's none of, of the stuff that uh, you see in some of the other uh, prepper, yeah, TV shows. This is reenacting and showing the skills used back in the day. Mixing it up with some old photos as well as modern ones. Growing crops. Uh, of specific uh, value to me at least was the way in which uh, they ended up in interviewing some of the old folks that lived through that. That's, uh, that, that was pretty good. Some of the old propaganda is also, also pretty nice. Uh, death to pests and the guy with, with the helmet, you know, all kind of war related. Mobilizing people. Women had such a, uh, a, um, a big role, given that most guys, most men were fighting the war. It was women that did lots of the, of the work back home. See, Women's Land Army. This is actually pretty neat stuff. So the book is, uh, yeah, I don't think it's that much like a manual. It doesn't give specific information uh, about how to do uh, actual stuff. Even though I, I did find quite a bit of, of good information here and there, especially in the end. You know, it's just ordinary stuff, how, is it, how it is that they did things back in the day. The all-in-one kitchen cabinet, something of an icon of the age. This is actually pretty cool and still useful today as it was back in, back in those days. 
doing laundry. So yeah, here and there you see tips and such of how to do things. Uh, and again, this is also true uh, of the TV series. I would recommend both of them. The book and the series, which again, in YouTube, just look up Wartime Farm and you will find it. Some of the routine tasks. Wartime food, some of the recipes, those were actually good as well. How important uh, sugar was, sugar, uh, how sugar was rationed so much. And the sugar ration varied from one pound per person per week, at its most generous, uh, down to half that at other times. Half a pound of sugar per week. Sugar was not only important so as to sweeten <laughs> teas and such, it was also important for, uh, for preserves, for, for canning. So it had a pretty big role as well. A little bit of foraging. I mean, very nice, uh, nice book. A few recipes here. And one of the things that I like is how it's, it, the recipes here are wartime related. So they are recipes of a period of, of time of, of scarcity and of lack of. So that's something that easily any survivalist, any modern survivalist could, could easily relate to. Preserving the way, the, the way in which they went about it, drying. On the experts, some of the the procedures for, for canning. They had these uh, little uh, canning machines. Actually, they would organize. It's incredible how important the level of of organization was. You know, organizing the small communities so as to get stuff done. There wasn't uh, again. It, it's a, a period of time of scarcity and and finding ways to do without. So they would maybe have one of these machines. I read that many of these machines were actually donated by uh, by the government of, of Canada, and they would maybe have one or two of these in in an entire town. So they would organize like canning parties, and they would all get together and do them at the same time. And and sugar also being very rationed, they would get it down to the minimum amount of sugar needed for for actual canning. It, it's uh, one of those finds, you know. It's one of those. Man, this is the, the stuff I love. The that in in Argentina it's called the cocina económica, the the wood burning stove. This is fantastic. That's one of the one of, one of that, that's one of the things to have, in my opinion. It allows you to use uh, wood for heating, for cooking. So all in all, very good book. It's pretty big as well. Hence. Every once in a while you see a little bit of, of how to do stuff, uh, in this case not just using a little pocket knife so as to make a, a basket of some sort. There's not exactly details on the kind of knot even though you can see the knot used here. And this is actually well done but because this is the knot that you would be using for, for you know, fibers like that. Rabbit farming. Air raid precautions. Some of this stuff is, is still true today, you know. Uh, if you think of the war in Syria, how people were um, w with the recent problems with uh, chemical weapons being used and such. Now there are differences, of course. The uh, the kind of war you saw back in World War II is different from what you have today. In those days it was uh, basically bombs uh, being dropped over over London so you had to uh, get the people out of the cities and in the countryside the, it was uh, it was kind of okay even though there were problems uh, and here you have the, the threat of invasion a little bit of, of camouflage and and doing exercises and drills but um, yeah, of course, this is different if we're talking about an invasion where there's uh, boots on the ground and uh, in that case, sending people to the countryside would not be much safer than getting bombed in the city, so it would be, it would be different that way. But uh, still, uh, a great way of learning stuff and definitely um, you know, worth checking. If you find it in, in Amazon, you will find this book. I love this part, how they, they would, uh, the women would fix the, the, the stockings, uh, it says that they would use um, um, a, a single strand of hair, of their own hair, so as to sew the stockings. That's pretty fantastic. How to do, like, uh, how to create a victory roll.
you know, different hairdressing styles. This is actually pretty neat, how to homemade soup, which is, which is pretty nice to know. So it does have a little bit of information, making a, a kilt. It has a bit of how to, but it's, but it's not the main point of, of the book. But you know what? It does go very well with, with, with the videos. Uh, checking both out, using the, the book as reference and some of those videos. It's, it's, um, yeah, it's a good source of information. Here also, you know, how to make uh, Christmas decorations cheap, uh, improvising toys. This is the, the cool stuff, you know, improvising toys. You, you rarely see this, the, these kind of things uh, being talked much about. How important are toys for, for kids? You know, it's, uh, it, for those of us that have kids, even when, when things are very, very bad, even though you may have huge problems that would seem to be so much more important than worrying about toys, you still worry about toys because that's what keeps, keeps your kids happy. And when everything else is, is hard, your kid's happiness is priceless. So that's it, guys. Just trying to keep it a little bit short. Wartime Farm, and absolutely much better than watching some of the junk these days on TV. Check out in YouTube the Wartime uh, full episodes as well. Guys, take care. Have a great day. See you in our next video.